Hey, what's up, guys? Tuki here, uh, back again. You know the deal. It's the Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode series right here on MLB The Show 18. And in today's episode, we finish up Season 5. But whether or not we're a playoff team, that has still not been decided. Of course, we finally sold a little bit. I wouldn't say we blew up the team because we knew that we were still going to be somewhat competitive despite being younger. And that has been the case thus far. Uh, we are currently in a wild card spot, relatively handedly as well, as we have arrived at the All Star break. Uh, of course, we went through the draft in the last episode. Not our greatest by any stretch of the imagination, although it didn't look like the best draft uh, we've ever seen in general. And that has led us to, again, this point where, of course, we have some concerns with the team, the bullpen as well. Lineup wise, there is an injury that we are dealing with. Uh, actually, we're dealing with quite a few. Martin Santana's out. Zach Cassidy's out. Uh, so we're dealing with a little bit of a, a little bit of an injury problem. But we're still looking pretty good. We still have a team that's more than capable of making the playoffs. Uh, we actually have the roster set to auto at the moment, which I think I'm going to keep it that way. Uh, that might result in certain guys getting called up and getting certain opportunities. So to begin, uh, let's do it. Let's move forward to the All-Star break. We're going to take a look at who actually made the All-Star game for us. Of course, we'll have at least one representative. Who will it be? Yadi Alvarez is the first. The 26-year-old that we picked up, I believe, in the Rule 5. Tremendous 10-4 and with a 2.65 ERA, so... A hell of a job done by him thus far. Our former reliever, our former closer, Brad Hand, also made it. We have our second representative, of course. It is Vlad Jr., who has been phenomenal this year. I'm going to guess he's the last one. And that appears to be the case, although Gregory Polanco made it because, of course, he did. So two representatives to the All-Star game this year. Not a bad way to go about things. The Yankees are offering a trade. I'm good. My roster's fine. I often don't make those mid-season trades unless we're selling because I normally feel pretty good about how I have the roster set up. We begin the post-All-Star game adventure against the Washington Nationals. They currently have a losing record. They beat us and then offer us a trade. I'm good, thanks. Even though you just beat us, you took two in a row against us. Can you make it three? No, you cannot, but we do lose Jamie Cruz for a month or two down in double-A. An unfortunate injury there. So losing that series to Washington pushes us to 60 and 39. We have three games against the division rival in Tampa. They're not a very good team. Uh, Martin Santana's back. That's going to be a pretty big boost. Lou Hurley still out. Alan Ferris is 100% healthy. As we lose two series in a row to begin things in this episode, not exactly ideal. Just double-checking, too, to see if there was anything done call-up or send-down-wise that I disagree with. Aside from the fact that Urena is not in the lineup at this point in time, Daryl Bryan was sent down. And I'm pretty much good with the decision-making there. Not too bad. Just trying to make sure, of course, it doesn't screw anything up. We have three games here. Actually, it's going to be four. It is four against Boston. This is tough. We have two games at hand on them. We need to win these games, and we lose the first one. Not a great start for us in this episode. We win the second. We lose the third. It's trade deadline day. We're going to sim through this. Uh, we lose a guy down in double-A, and we lose that game as well. So three straight series losses to begin this episode. Not what we were hoping for as the Red Sox have jumped us. Uh, we still have a six-game lead on Seattle for that second wild card spot. But again, certainly not what we were hoping for here. And again, when you look at guys like Diego Lariano struggling, Henry Murillo hasn't been great. He hasn't been miserable like uh, Lariano has. Again, there's not really a whole hell of a lot we plan on doing with this team, though. We are set up for the future more than anything. Uh, but unfortunately, it hasn't been the start that we were looking for, but we have time to turn it around. Three games against Oakland, 50 and 57 record. We lose game one. Not great. Uh, the Nationals offering me a deal. Abreu. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. Thank you. Games two and three as Martin Santana returns from injury and immediately goes back out. He fractures his shin. He's out for a month or two. 
and we lose all three games against Oakland. I said I wasn't sure if it was going to be a, a you know if we were going to be playoff bound. We might not be by the end of this. We now find ourselves six games back of New York, Seattle only four and a half back. Again, we still have a long way to go, but what a brutal start. Three games against Cleveland, and we finally win a series. We take two out of three. Can we build upon that against Boston here? Battling for seeding, we lose two out of three, including a 16-2 loss. Good lord, man. That is... Oh, boy, I want to see pitching-wise. Eight, eight earned runs from Martin and Murillo with four. Cortez with four. Absolutely brutal effort there. I'm going to sim these three games against Baltimore, and then maybe we'll take a look at the team. Santana's still out, and we lose all three games to Baltimore. We are in free fall for no reason whatsoever. Aside from the fact we have two uh, of our starting pitchers on cold streaks, I don't know what the hell's going on right now, man. This is absolutely brutal. Like, we didn't lose anybody... You know, like the game didn't screw me out of anybody, did it? <laughs> I'm so confused as to why this is happening. Ah, uh, sent down Alan Ferris. That's all well and good. I wouldn't have lost anybody, right? I don't think I've lost anybody at least. Purchased the contract of Terrell Cordova from AAA. Uh, promoted Damian Bats. Again, I don't think I would have lost anybody. From the looks of it, that doesn't appear to be the case as far as, like, the game, you know, like I mentioned, accidentally losing me somebody via waivers or anything like that. But that is still just very disappointing. Let's go with very disappointing. Arias is there. He's currently not playing. I'm just making sure, again, like, I'm, I'm panicking as if, like, there's anybody that was sent down that shouldn't have been. The big issue, though, is just the fact that we're dealing with injuries, I'd say, more than anything. Three games against Tampa. We do win that series, taking two out of three. 11 to 10 in that third game. Absolutely ridiculous. And this is a pretty big moment for us. Back to back weekends, three game series against New York. If we're going to make the playoffs, obviously. I mean, if we're going to make the playoffs, we need to win. If we're going to compete for that division title, we definitely need to win. And go figure, we swept them. I was going to say, just go figure, we won the series. We swept them. Absolutely ridiculous. And that is a massive point swing in our favor. That actually boosts the Red Sox to first in the division. We're now four and a half back of Boston. And uh, only three and a half back of New York. Six games clear of Seattle. And I'm not sure if I necessarily want to make the playoffs in the wild card. Because, of course, that's going to... Uh, that's going to cause some trouble I don't know if I want to scroll through all of these, but I do kind of want to keep an eye on what's happened. But, yeah, that is that is not a great scenario for us here. We'll skip over the rest of those. For now, we're fine. That is crazy, though. We've won four straight games, but after struggling to that extent, we sweep the Yankees. We have four games against Minnesota. They are also battling for a playoff spot. And, oh, my God. Oh, God. You know, I don't know what it is, man. People are always like, oh, it's, it's the EA sim engines that are crazy. Well, this is an EA, and this sim engine is proving to be just as ridiculous and wildly inconsistent. Uh, after the struggles we had earlier this month, we have now won eight straight games, including sweeping New York and the Minnesota Twins, two playoff teams. That puts us just two games back of Boston and only a half a game back of New York and the lead gets even bigger again the AL East is just so stacked with us Boston and New York it's tough to not end up in this wild card spot but again we still have an entire month to go three more games against New York and we take the series at the very least Mike Marion down in double A he's going to be out for pretty much the rest of the season that's his Mark Ramirez god damn that's that was a rough time down in double A, and it gets worse with the uh, Luis Alonso and Damian Bats. Jesus, what is in the water? Where the hell are they playing? They went from Trenton to Hartford. Yikes. I don't know what's going on, but that is absolutely brutal. Regardless, uh, if we're focusing on the main team here, things are going incredibly well for us. So I'm feeling good about that. 
And of course, there would have been some call-ups as well just to try and deal with that lineup. There are 24 players right now in Double A. As thankfully, people have uh, people have gotten back to it. Eflin's been dropped to fifth in the rotation, which is a little bit weird. Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy down there in Triple A. As far as the main lineup goes, Cassie, how's Art Matheny doing? Not hitting over 300, but still doing pretty well. Tavares again. Bar show the fact that he's playing left despite being a catcher primarily, is incredibly weird to me. Again, you would have thought they'd go with Cordova or Moniak. I'm going to trust the coach's decision on that, though. We have two games against Miami, a stopgap series. What can we do there? We can win both games. That's what we can do. And as of September 1st, 2022, we stand at 78 and 55. Let's take a look at the standings. A game and a half back of Boston. We have jumped the Yankees in these standings as we approach the final stretch here. We have three games against Detroit. They're currently not in a playoff spot. Can we win? And we're also playing Marcus Stroman, who's having a pretty damn good season. But these are the games. These are the type of teams that we've struggled against. Not today. We have swept Detroit 81 and 55 now on the season. We are in first place in the AL East. Despite all the changes that we made, we are in first. That is insane. The fact that at any point in September, we've been able to say that we are in first place in this division is just crazy, given the changes that we made. And again, you look at this, like the rotation's not terrible. It's not what we had previously. The bullpen's pretty bad, especially for our average relievers, but... You know, we're we're making the most of it, I guess. And then you look at the lineup and who's in the lineup right now, and it's, you know, like Zach Cassidy is there, Matheny, Tavares, Varsho, but we're getting the job done, as crazy as that is. Let's see what happens here. Three games against Baltimore. Uh, the Buffalo Bison have not made the playoffs. Neither have the Fisher Cats, surprisingly, with the winning record. You watch now, by the way. We'll lose to Baltimore. Uh, well, yeah, let's continue simming. We are good. Next two games, we end up winning the series at least. So we lost the first game. Uh, Liriano with the loss there, but Lester Martin and uh, Alvarez. Martin, by the way, uh, put into the starting rotation. It's worked out quite well. And this, my friends, is big time. Three games against Boston. Kershaw, Guillen, and Bundy. This could go a long way. Detroit, losing record. Seattle, they're fighting. Barely over 500. Houston, Losing record. Baltimore, losing record. Tampa, losing record. And then we have a final series against Baltimore to end the regular season. This three-game series against Boston, uh, the only, I mean, more than likely, the only series that we're going to have here against a team with the winning record. Uh, what can we do? That's the question. We can win the series two out of three. 85-57 and 57 now as of September 12th. That is mind-boggling to me. We are two and a half up on Boston. Four games clear of the Yankees again. We're the 17th rated team, yet we're somehow pulling this off. And again, it's pretty much set in stone. It is. It's set in stone. Three teams from the AL East are going to make it, just as been the case for the majority of this series. The only question is seeding. We have three games against Detroit, and for the first time in a while, we lose the series. We went off in Game 2, 13-5, but we do end up losing that series. Three games against Seattle. They do have a winning record, one game above, and they are desperate to not be out of it. Again, the one game that we actually end up winning in that series, we dominated, but we still lose back-to-back -back series, and that's going to push us to the brink of losing this advantage. Only one game clear of New York and one and a half up on Boston. It is going to be close. No changes have been made. Of course, with the September call-ups, we're going to have a ton of players here. And we do. And of course, the injuries are also a factor. And I imagine it'll screw us out of having Marvin Santana, potentially. I'm intrigued to see if we make the playoffs, which we should. We're going to, actually. Uh, if Santana's allowed to play or not. Three games against Houston. We lose the first two. Santana should be back. We don't get swept at the very least. Uh, menus are killing me right now. 
Santana's back in the lineup, which is great. He's been phenomenal for us. Again, just 21. It's that 49 durability. It's, if that can get better, he should be a monster. Uh, you could argue, if we set the lineup on our own, which we probably should, by the way, plus 15 contact. Good Lord. When we set the lineups, like hopefully he can just stay healthy until we make the playoffs. If he does, he'll be the DH. No doubt about it. Uh, we have four games against Baltimore. What can we do here? They're close to 500. We take three out of four. 91 wins on the season. Four games against Tampa. Three games against Baltimore. And the regular season will have come to a close. We're only a half game up on the Yankees. A game up on Boston. This is ridiculous. Out of this three-headed monster in the AL East, one will fall in the wild card game. It's just a matter of who the hell it is. That is a frightening, frightening division. But still, all the changes that we've made, and we're right there, and we're still competitive. Four games against Tampa. Let's go, and we split it. Not what I was hoping for. Where are we now? We're a game back of Boston. We have separation on New York, but we're a game back of Boston. We have to win. First game against Baltimore is a loss. That might seal it. Two games back now of Boston. They have to lose their final two. We have to win our final two just to force a tiebreaker. Otherwise, we are condemned to playing the Yankees in the wild card game. It would be a shame for us to slip up now, and we have. So there you go. Out of that race, that's all you can call it, a sprint to the finish. The Red Sox will take the division title. We will be playing the New York Yankees in the wild card game, which is a scary, scary thought. We end up getting swept by Baltimore and losing four straight heading into the playoffs. So Minnesota plays L.A., and then we have ourselves against the Yankees. The winner plays Boston. Jesus. Over in the NL, the Mets and Reds are in the wild card. The winner plays the Cubs. The Rockies play the Braves in the other NL DS matchup. As far as how the regular season went, let's take a look. Mike Sororka, Canada's own. He's from Calgary, though. 13-10, and 10, meh, a 3.66 ERA, meh, not a tremendous season for him. Uh, then again, it is the best season of his career. So, he's still 24, he's still young. We'll see, right? We'll see. That's not exactly what we were hoping for out of an ace, but we'll see. It's not a terrible start. Um, Diego Liriano, 10 and 15, a 4 5 8 ERA. He is certainly capable of more than that, as we have seen last year. So, uh, perhaps, I mean, we can't even really consider it a sophomore slump, but a disappointing year for him. He's better than that as well. Lester Martin played the majority of this season from the bullpen, but an 8 and 5 record, a 3 3 6 ERA. That's solid. Zach Eflin, so far, our only pitcher with under a 3.0 ERA. He was pretty good. I'll take that. That's more than good. Certainly not the wins-loss record that he had the season prior. And then Yadi Alvarez, who of course made the All-Star game 15 and 10, a 3-1-2 ERA. I'll take it. I'll take it. So again, rotation-wise, I'd say these players are capable of more. Uh, not the best outcomes for them. Then we have Henry Maria in the bullpen. Uh, the big thing to pay attention to, I'd say, is the whip. He played the majority of the season there. He was he was okay. He was good. He's pissed off about being in the bullpen, though. So, of course, he's one of the players that might end up getting moved. You look again at the depth that we have coming up through the system. There are going to be... It's going to continue to be a turnstile as far as that starting rotation goes. Uh, Cortez with a 1-6-1 whip. Not, not tremendous, but he's 21 with C potential. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, Arturo Alfonso, who I expected to be the worst of the bunch, might have actually been the best. He's up to a 74, 19 years old. That's a pretty damn strong season from him with a 1-3-9. A 1-4 from Michael Howell, which is okay again for a C potential guy. Jordan Hicks, a 1-6-6, very disappointing for him. A 1-4-3 for Germán, or Herman, perhaps, which was okay, I suppose. And then Victor Arano, clearly our best in the bullpen all season long. Very happy with his numbers. Uh, and, of course, again, down in the minors. So Hunter Green, of course, is a legitimate 82. I think he'll be getting the call up sooner rather than later. James Who as well. Expect to see him in the bullpen next season. 
And of course, down in Double A, got someone like Ross Hall, someone like Bill Snowden. Uh, this team is going to continue to change. So it is still a miracle to me, of course, that we did as well as we did. Zach Cassidy, five home runs, 37 RBIs, and a 251 average. Not too bad at all for a legitimate 73. So pretty good for him, the 22 year old C potential. Not bad. Bo Bichette, 21 home runs, 64 RBIs, and a 271. So a new career high in home runs. Again, gets over 60 RBIs in the season. A new career high in stolen bases. And a new career high in batting average and on base percentage. That is the type of development we were hoping to see from Bo Bichette. Junior is a superstar. We knew this. A 99 currently, a legitimate 95. God damn it, we're going to have to pay him so much money. It's a crime that he only made $10 million this season. It's a crime. He's so good. He's so unbelievably good. A career high in hits, home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, two consecutive seasons with over a 300 average. He's a monster. Martin Santana, under 200 at-bats. Very disappointing for him. Only 57 games. That's how injury-prone he was, but he has made it to the playoffs. Hopefully he's eligible and there's no screwy, funny business with September call-ups. And when he did play, though, seven home runs, 27 RBIs, and a 279 average. Not bad. Just can he stay healthy? He needs to be our DH, really. Uh, Francisco Mieja, 15 home runs, 75 RBIs, and a 257 average. I'm not complaining. A new career high in RBI. A near career high in batting average. That's better than he had been over the past three years. I'm good with it for a more... A defense first catcher. Art Matheny, seven home runs, 35 RBIs, and a 272 average. Very good as well for one of our just random depth options. Again, those C potential guys can have some value at some point. Uh, Victor Robles, 20 home runs, 76 RBIs, and a 252 average. Uh, tremendous. 18 stolen bases as well. Uh, what a pickup he was. Very happy with that. Leody Tavares uh, for a Rule 5 pickup. God damn how he hit 23 home runs. I do not understand. 72 RBIs and a 259 average. Absolutely phenomenal for the 23-year-old in his rookie season. Absolutely phenomenal. I do not understand how he did that. I don't. I'm glad he did, though. And then Mickey Moniak, 157 at bats, 3 home runs, 6 RBIs, a 280 average. Not bad. Ended up staying in the lineup and actually playing DH, which, again, I don't understand that. It should be Santana. Uh, but, again... Good stuff. Arias, six home runs, 17 RBIs, only a 203 average of those. So the uh, type of player where if he hits the ball, he does well. Then again, last season he was better. But if he hits the ball, it goes far. But it's just, is he going to hit the ball? Varsho, six home runs, 36 RBIs, a 238 average. Not bad for a Rule 5 pickup. Uh, Chisholm, the other Rule 5 pickup, not ideal. Uh, might be traded heading into next season, of course. Uh, and Urena, don't know why you're on the bench. You probably won't be for the playoffs, but eight homers, 53 RBIs, and a 277 average. Of course, guys like Terrell Cordova were able to play. He actually did relatively well. A D potential guy, but of course, solid hitting, good speed. Uh, Ryan Dahl, one of our outfielders for the future, up to a 74. I'm digging the way this team looks in the minors right now. It's looking really good. Award-wise, I wouldn't be surprised to see Rookie of the Year. And there it is. Tavares gets it. Uh, Mieja and Bichette also win gold gloves. So Matt Olson was the MVP of the AL. Bryce Harper in the NL. Of course, he's on Atlanta. Uh, you had Berrios from the Cy Young and Lonnie Chisenhall. Kelvin Herrera won Reliever of the Year, as did. Do not tell me this game froze. I swear to God, it almost did. I was going to record the wild card game. Now I'm kind of concerned. Kimbrell, one reliever of the year. Rookie of the year, Mike Poppy and Leody Tavares. Hank Aaron Award to Bryce Harper and Travis Shaw. And then we get into the gold gloves. So that is that. Your final standings, of course, you would have seen uh, earlier. And I can't look uh, major league wide. I'd have to go over here. League leaders for the hell of it. Chisholm, 326. Good Lord. Junior was sixth. On that, let's just get a, a look at like home runs so you know what to look for. Uh, anything over 30 was doing pretty damn well. RBIs, anything over 90 was doing phenomenally. And of course, Junior was still up there. And ERA, well, actually, the wins leader, Barrios at 21, uh, Alvarez with 15, 
The save leader was Osuna, which is going to be somewhat controversial, I'm sure. But then again, I remember at the start of the series when people were like, they're not going to trade Osuna, because I traded him immediately. And they ended up trading him. I still feel very validated over that. Uh, so Arano, considering he wasn't the closer at 34, that's not too bad. And then you see the ERA leaders. Zach Eflin is actually top five, which is phenomenal. So actually, just in general... Uh, normally, I mean, we've seen around, you know, two fives and under be the elite of the elite. A two seven one was the highest with Severino. So that just kind of gives you a look at how well uh, this team did this season. Uh, team rankings, sixth in batting average. In terms of total hits, we were fifth. Home runs, I don't expect us to be up there, and we were not. 22nd. RBIs, we were 11th, first in stolen bases, 19 for Zach Cassidy, tremendous, absolutely tremendous, and I wanted to look, have any records been broken, I don't believe that's been the case, I have seen the save record been broken uh, relatively early on in a series, um, not this time though, nothing doing there, and I think with that we're pretty much good to go, the big decision here is in terms of just what the hell are we going to be able to do in terms of call-ups like if we wanted to set up this roster i mean varsho very clearly is going to be uh the backup option you know even if i wanted to call up hernandez i couldn't he's not eligible um at first we're good junior there it's all well and good art Matheny at second no problems with that cassidy is going to be in um shortstop wise that's looking good Outfield-wise, I'd say the only questionable mark is, you know, Moniak being in for Armenteros, but Moniak's been solid. And then pitching-wise, the only change I'd want to make is to get Hunter Green on the team, and we cannot. So the big thing to decide, the roster's pretty much set in stone. The big thing to decide here is what to do uh, and who to go with in this game. That's the big question. One game against the Yankees if I were to sort this out for uh, how I would rank options Alvarez was so good earlier this season he did drop off a bit though I mean yeah if we were to if we were to rank this I mean especially off of ERA that's what we'd be looking at in terms of who should start now we went with Zach Eflin in the wild card last year that may or may not have been the right choice. We could go with our ace, but he is not coming off the best season. And really, I think that's what it comes down to. Do we go with Eflin, who is a major reason as to why we won the World Series in the first place two years ago? Or do we go with our ace, Mike Sororka? That's what it comes down to. That decision is up to you guys. Let me know down in the comments below if you're still following along. And I know you are. You might not be the most vocal in the comments section. That's cool. I get it. No worries. But let me know. The decision's up to you. Um, yeah, Sororka or Eflin for this one game. And then lineup-wise, I mean, as far as who jumps in, the only thing is we have to get Urena into the lineup. We know the DH is going to be a factor. It's just whether or not, really to me, whether or not Mickey Moniak plays. And I don't necessarily know if he should. Again, if we put Santana at DH, we have Tavares and Robles in the outfield. What could we do? Aside from changing Junior back to an outfielder. But then again, then I don't know who would play first. I don't know if I want Moniak at DH, but we need to find a way to get Urena into the lineup and put Santana at DH at the very least. So the thought... Of, I mean, hell, I wouldn't be against putting him at first. That being Santana. Matheny can play first, can he not? Can't one of the Matheny or Cassidy play first? So Cassidy can play first. It might not be the worst idea to have Cassidy at first, Urena at third, Junior at left or right. You could just put him in left. And then have Santana at DH. But Moniak's on fire. Moniak's on a good run. Tavares isn't going to be taken out. Robles isn't going to be taken out. And Santana's not going to be taken out. That's the big question. What do we do lineup-wise here? Do we just run with Moniak on the bench? Or do we trust him because he's on 
Uh, a little bit of a roll. Let me know what you think lineup-wise, but I think we have to go with Santana at DH. But at the end of the day, though, for sure, we have to go with whatever lineup we think gives us the best chance to win. It's one game and one game on, uh, one game and one game only. Can we beat the Yankees this time in the wild card matchup? Can we move on? At the very least, to see us make the playoffs after blowing up the team the way we did. I know I've banged on that point a couple of times, but it just goes to show what a good spot this franchise is in. And then again, you factor in the guys down in AAA pitching wise, batting wise, like just it's it's looking really good. And I'm excited to see what this team ends up being just heading into next year. We don't know what free agency is going to look like. I'm excited for this team. I'm still excited for this series and just the way we are progressing along. Uh, that said, for now, we are done here. Next episode, we go through whatever the hell we have to go through. Will we be one and done against New York? Who knows, but we're going to find out. Let me know what you think we should do the lineup-wise. Who gets the start in that game? Let me know down in the comments below. You know the deal. Support the video. Support the channel. I love your face. I love you. And I will see you in the next one. Go Blue Jays. Go Blue Jays.